Good afternoon. This is the uh, Finance Committee meeting on June 18th, 2024. Um, we're going to hold this meeting virtually per many actions of the uh, state um, legislature. And uh, if you wish to make a public comment, uh, please uh, raise your hand uh, and we'll bring you in to give a comment. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is call a, each member of the committee to make sure that you can hear me and I can hear you. Uh, Bernie? Present. Mandy, uh, Councilor Haneke? Present. Andy? Present. Kathy? I'm here. Uh, Councilor Walker? Here. Okay, uh, we don't have Matt. He's been pretty busy these days. Um, so I think we're ready to begin. Um, why don't we start with public comment? If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to make a public comment, uh, now is your time. Just raise your hand, please. Don't see any hands going up. So I'm going to then close the public comment period. And uh, Irvin, Michelle, I, I do want to apologize for you for uh, last week. Um, we spent, I thought, I didn't think it would take us that long to get through the discussion of the school track, but we had another discussion last night, <laughs> the council meeting, which was probably not another hour or so. Uh, so um, it was a very hard uh, discussion to have, but uh, I want to you, I want to focus this meeting on the um, AHRA report and uh, the funding plan. And there are four uh, discussions that, um, or four issues that we want to discuss as a council um, two of which I think uh, GOL is going to take the lead on, uh, but the first two that the, the two that we can take the lead lead on um, are uh, what type of fund is envisioned. In other words, we had are, are originally had talked about an endowment type fund, but um, there's obviously different options in the in the final report. And uh, can we accelerate payments into and out of the fund? What, what are the options that we have and uh, how could we do that? Um, the other two questions that I think GOL is gonna focus on is what can we spend the fund on and what is the process for, for spending from the fund? Um, so I don't think we need to focus on that as much as what type of fund is envisioned and um, can we accelerate payments into and out of the fund? Uh, so uh, I don't know if Michelle or Irv, if you have any opening comments you'd wish to make. Michelle. Uh, Irv, I'm, I'm happy to have you make any opening comments first, unless you want me to jump in. Yeah, why don't you do that? I mean, uh, I'm gonna save my comments till later. Sure. Well, Bob, thank you so much. And thanks to the committee and no worries at all. It was actually quite uh, interesting to listen to the meeting last week. Um, I guess what I would, the question I come in with is if anyone knows where we are currently with the fund, that would be really useful information. So I think it's maybe in the $400,000 range, um, but that was Certainly something I wanted to ask the committee um, or perhaps Holly or whoever might have that information. Um, and really, yeah, we we I think at this point it's important for the finance committee and for the council to have a discussion based on the recommendations we made. Um, I will highlight that I remain concerned about the cannabis tax revenue being our model, given where we're seeing a decline in that. And I noticed in the budget, the proposed budget this year, that uh, there wasn't ex anticipated cannabis numbers. And I don't think there were numbers 
even from last year. So I was curious why those were left blank in, in the budget document that I saw um, online. So um, at this point, you know, I have a recommendation for how I think we might want to, you know, consider moving forward. But I recognize that uh, this committee and and of course, the council need to, you know, uh, have that discussion. So I'm happy to just sit back and listen at this point and then um, jump in as necessary. OK, so. Uh... Michelle, I uh, I did uh, reach out to, to Holly earlier today, and um, the um, actually, if uh, Athena, can I share my screen? Uh, so Holly has her hand raised. Okay, Holly. Yep. Yeah. So um. Bob had reached out earlier today and I sent him the information on the current balance in the fund and sort of how we got there. So I can quickly review that with you. Um, and I also just want to respond to Michelle's comment, uh, Michelle, correct? Michelle's comment that the cannabis um, tax revenue is not in the budget document. So the reason the cannabis revenue is not budgeted is because we're not using that revenue as part of our budget. We are basically taking that revenue, letting it fall to free cash, and then doing a transfer in the subsequent fiscal year. If I use the cannabis revenue as part of my budget, it wouldn't be available to go to the rep reparations fund. So there is no budgeted figure for it because we're technically not using it in our budget. We're, we're keeping it as an unbudgeted amount and then doing that transfer in a subsequent fiscal year. So right now, the balance in the fund, um, you know, basically as of today's date is $476,966. In FY21, we collected approximately $210,000 in the um, uh, cannabis tax. So in FY22, we transferred that into the reparations stabilization fund. In FY22, we collected 134,330. If you want to pull the email up, Bob, so that people could see these figures and not have to be jotting them down, it might yeah, be easier. I, let me. Uh... And so it was $134,330 that we transferred in FY23. In FY24, it was 105,537. So, so far this fiscal year, we've only, um, so far this fiscal year, we've only collected um, approximately $58,000. Uh, there is one more quarter that will come in. I would guess we'd probably you know, end up maybe around $70,000 this year. It just depends on what that fourth quarter comes in at. I can't, I can't really guess, but I would say maybe 70, maybe a little more. Um, so then that would get transferred in through a town council vote after free cash is certified this fall. That would, um, assuming the town council approves the transfer and continues on with the, um, you know, the, the policy that we have in the past, then that amount would be transferred in. Um, what we collected in FY24 would be transferred into the fund in FY25 once free cash is certified. Yeah, so what I've done is I've taken the, those um, figures, Holly and, and Michelle, and put them into a spreadsheet just to kind of do some scenario analysis. And I assumed that we'd get 75,000 this year um, and just kept that, you know, level for for uh, going forward. And assuming we just accrue um, in the first the first option, we just accrue the cannabis tax until we reach two million, um, and we get some return on investment. We reinvest the money. I just put it put down at five percent, which may or may not be realistic, but. Um, and the 75,000 may not be realistic going forward, but assuming just we just do that, looks like we hit 2 million somewhere 
around FY uh, 2036, okay? And at that point, if you assume that you pull 4% 4, 4 out, uh, as you go forward, um, you can see the, um, the stream of, of money that's actually available. I carried it out to 2050. And so in that scenario, it's 1.7 million that's available, but it's not available until FY 36, 37 in that time frame. Um, in the second scenario, which is one of the uh, options, uh, except we can't get, we don't have a hundred thousand to, to go, but uh, if we, you know, just starting with this, we, we just, you know, if we have 75, if we put 25 towards the fund and 50,000 as a distribution and then run the same numbers, um, we kind of come up with uh, about 1.8 million in, uh, in distributions, although they obviously start a lot faster, uh, start a lot earlier. And at the end, the fund is obviously bigger um, in the, the first scenario because we haven't really tapped it as much. Uh, in the but uh, in the second scenario, the fund you know gets to above three million um, by the time you're there. Now again, these are just hypothetical scenarios, but uh, Michelle and Irv and everyone it gives people it gives you a sense of what the trade-offs are in terms of you know kind of building the fund um, slowly with the with the cannabis tax versus um, you know using some of the money uh, from the cannabis tax uh, tax to to do uh, distributions early uh, earlier uh, than um, than you would normally so that's kind of the two scenarios that I just did a quick and dirty on. Um, obviously, there's other scenarios uh, that have been um, put in the report, uh, you know, in terms of funding the, um, the, uh, the, the, the reparations fund, um, either a lump sum fund or, you know, funding it, um, you know, basically over a four year period of time. So um, we can uh, we can certainly you know model that out, but it, it you know that's just those are things that would require us to tap into reserves. Um, so um, I haven't really looked at that. Uh, any uh, Kathy? Did you have some comments? Uh, yeah. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, but I'm not in the town room, so I don't have to do the mic. Um, so. When we were discussing this, what, last fall, another option, and I'm not going to attempt to do what Bob has very nicely done, would be an option three, where as he's done it, that we are each year, the, the fund, or let me step back. The distribution could be every other year, for starter, rather than every year. So it would be in a, it would be a larger amount. And you could be distributing part of the earnings of the fund, as well as what Bob just did with not put the whole cannabis tax in, put a piece of it. And so it it will be drawing down on the base somewhat. It would not build up as much. So as in option two, it doesn't treat it as an endowment. It treats it as an amount of money that can be spent but it would continue to accumulate over time. So it's just a um, another way of potentially saying, you know, year one, year three, year five is a distribution rather than annual. So in the alternate years, you put the full cannabis tax in, in the distribution years, you put part of it. So it's just, there's another way if the distribution, for example, 50 looks too low, this would be uh, have a larger distribution potentially, but do it in an every other year basis. So in a way, over on the other side of what are we spending it on, there would be a budget um, that you would know in advance. So that's just, that's one other piece 
reminding people that we started thinking of some ways, if you're not treating it as an endowment, that we could proceed. And I don't know whether that's completely clear, but it, it's it's a variation on option two where we're spending some of the base, but a small, so you could say no more than 5% of the base, you know, something small. Yeah. I, I just used 4% so that we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be running the principal down. As right. much. But again, you could, you could do whatever percent you, you want. You, you could do whatever that you're trying to leave most of the principal there, um, but you're using some of the, the gain to combine with a share of the annual con contribution. So it's, it's just a variation on what Bob has an option to. Uh, Councilor Hamicky. So I was not part of the fall discussions. Um, and so I'm coming into this, I guess, partway through, but I went back to the KP law opinion that we just got. Um, and there's a lot of options there that it sounds like from Bob, you're just summary right now that we're not even going to consider or have a discussion about. I mean, there's a lot of options that maybe I would never recommend, but shouldn't we be discussing the options in the KP law opinion too, instead of just sort of already limiting ourselves to these two options that came from one counselor without much prior discussion at all, I feel like. Um, but I could, you know, like I said, I missed the prior discussion that resulted in the KP law opinion that we received um, on May 10th. Um, no, I wasn't intending to, to limit discussion on anything. Okay. Uh, so feel free to... I, I guess then I'm, I'm curious how we want to proceed with this discussion. Um, because, you know, I have, I have a lot of thoughts on each individual option. Um, but jumping around seems like a very hard thing to do because there's so many differences and pros and cons in my mind with each option. And then I have questions about the overall issue um, of, uh, I'll stick here with, with a distribution that starts next year as we build the fund, because um, that option is similar to option two, I guess here, although option two is, is sort of just a, a, as Bob said, a, an illustration of what something like this might look like. Um, we have no mechanism for distributing right now in terms of other than a vote of the council for something, but no mechanism for how the council would come to a proposal to spend the money. Um, the reparations report had some things about what they'd like to do that when I read it really appeared to me to be social services focused, not necessarily reparations focused in the traditional idea of reparations. And there didn't seem to be a, a, a big push in the reparations report to seek the special state laws, the special acts that would require, that would be required to be a more traditional reparations. And so something like option two, are we really just aiming to create something that is adding funds to X social services program that happens to help youth um, or happens to help First time home buyers, uh, no matter their their um, you know uh, low income first home time first time home buyers and and something with option two or even you know th this option of a distribution on an annual basis that only spends the the interest as it were the income. I have concerns about that simply because in general this is. We we don't tend to think about our town's tax revenues as sitting in a bucket never to be spent. Um, and that's what a plan for sort of a similar to an endowment fund is. Taking tax money now 
and never spending it, holding it, which in some sense increases the tax burden on our tax residents indefinitely because we're never going to spend it. Um, and that is a discussion I think we should have as to whether that's something we want to do is say, we're going to take your tax money and then not spend the principal ever. Um, Cause that, that's, that's a huge decision in my mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mandy, I realize you weren't part of the fall discussion, but we did get into this that um, at least we were leaning toward don't think of it as an endowment, which is where you're going, you know, be, be able to start spending it. I mean, clearly we and then the other there were other discussions on what would be the process. But but where where you were going is both for for multiple reasons. I mean, the. It doesn't have to be an endowment. It was suggested it could be um, way back when. But I think many of us thought, don't treat it as an endowment. And then the question is, um, to what extent are you spending down some of the accumulation or not? You know, how much are you doing some for the new contribution? So that's where I also wanted to say it could be every other year. And the one other thing I just want to say, because you weren't on the committee, as we thought of, a, it could be a process similar to the Community Preservation Act, where there's a certain amount of money each year with a, the following, some agreed on set by the council categories could be supported. So it would be, but but it would be a budgeted amount each year rather than you can just spend the whole accumulation. So that's, this is sort of a, a midpoint in a discussion we started to have, but we didn't get very far other than toying with some <clears> ideas. <throat> and that's, and the KP law is sort of talking to that. I mean, first you have to, you do at some point have to decide what you're willing to spend it on and what that process is, but it's what stream of money would be available either on an annual or a biannual basis. And we were moving away as a group from thinking an endowment made sense, as opposed to spending some of each year's contribution and spending some amount of the accumulated funds rather than trying to preserve it. So that I just wanted to say that that was, we didn't get to what that might look like. Um, you know, so I think we could technically spend down the whole amount if you want to spend it all down. You know, the, the amount flowing in is capped at 2 million. So I, I just wanted to say that Bob's piece is building off of a discussion we started to have without reaching a conclusion. Yeah, I, again, I was just trying to illustrate two options. I wasn't saying that these are the only options. Uh, Andy? Yeah, I actually think that uh, what you did was very helpful. Uh, if we go back to the beginning when uh, Sean Mangano was finance director and he suggested it, he suggested it as an endowment. Uh, and a th the theory was that uh, we would try and accumulate within a reasonable period of time. Um, I think that at that point we were thinking higher uh, return from cannabis revenue but that we would try and get to $2 million and treat it as an endowment and be able to make regular expenditures from it. Uh, you know, and it's evolved over time because uh, there's been so many changes as noted, the uh, change in cannabis tax being um, a major one. Second is the AHRA um, desire not to wait too long to start having some annual programs. Uh, so I think we, we do need to think through this uh, again as to whether we are in fact thinking of changing any of the basic concepts that the goal is to get to $2 million and uh, we expend money beforehand how do you account for that? Uh, 
you've uh, 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 and I guess the other thing that uh, other communities and Michelle is really our expert on this, but um, you know other communities have uh, tried to deal with the question of how do you have a reparations program. Uh, or something you call a reparations program and feeling that it's meeting the spirit of reparations. Um, and a lot of communities uh, it, um, are doing it with um, social services uh, programs, if you want to call it that, but things like housing support, uh, recognizing that housing is an area that has been particularly difficult for families that uh, because of ongoing discrimination have not been able to purchase houses and uh, build equity and therefore are forever in the loop of paying rent. Uh, so those are the sorts of things that I think uh, we probably need to work with AHRA to grapple with to find out what is the best uh, solution here and what is the town uh, able to commit to it and should commit to it, which is the recommendation partly that uh, look to a finance committee to do. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Councilor Walker? Uh, thank you, Bob. So I think a lot of the things that we're talking about don't necessarily need to be decided in order to look at the question that's in front of us today. Um, things like how the council would like to spend the money um, and mostly because we still need the successor committee to be able to make those decisions. Um, and I think that, and please someone from the AHRA correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that what came through is that we would like the successor committee to have an idea of what their funding source is and how we will be contributing to it in order for them to make decisions as to how and what more specifically um, they will be spending the funds on. And so I think, you know, as a council, we've already committed to the funding. So at this point, we're just considering how to get the money into the fund. I think that's the only question that's in front of us. Um, Personally, I think we should be making a contribution every single year, and I think we should be allowing the successor committee to make recommenda recommendations to us as to how they want to spend the, fun the funds when we get to that point. I do recognize we don't even currently have the successor committee um, assembled yet, but I'm hoping that we can also <clears throat> encourage the town manager to do that as soon as possible so that we can you know, continue to move forward on this piece. Um, and with that being said, I'm, I'm concerned. I do have concerns about the cannabis tax and possible fluctuations um, in what is available to us and therefore what we can contribute. Um, and I think our contribution needs to be consistent and that might make it easier for the successor committee to plan and come up with uh, their recommendations. I'm just taking notes here. So, um, uh, Councillor Haneke. So the KP law opinion gave us options that did not rely on free cash or other stabilization funds to fund this quickly. Yet I've heard no one talk about using those options. And I don't know whether the committee knew of those options back in October or whether those options are new. And should we have that discussion or has the committee already sort of said no to some of those options and that cannabis is where we want to stay? Um, and then I'm still confused as to the but we don't have to know how we're spending it now and and some of the other things said because a lot of the options for funding in terms of meeting the council's prior votes if we're going to stick by those votes um 
rely on determining whether there will distributions will start sooner rather than later and how much those distributions will be. And if we don't have a mechanism to distribute right now, how do we figure out some of these other questions about funding with that unknown? And then in terms of the, the you know, call it what you want, endowment, not endowment, it sounds like there's discussion of having this account be funded through taxpayer funds for up to $2 million and then having it go on indefinitely. Although maybe Kathy's indication was that it would not go on indef indefinitely like an endowment. And so then the question becomes, at what year are we aiming to spend it to zero? And I haven't heard that discussion either. Because if it's never intended to be spent to zero and the fund is never intended to go away completely, that that I think I think it all goes into the discussion as to what our recommendation would be on where the funds come from. Because there are one-time options we could do to fully put two million in. Potentially, well, the the it, from my reading of the KP Law opinion, with a vote of the people on a ballot initiative, on a ballot election, the people could decide to raise their taxes to fund $2 million one time into this account. And then the taxes would go back down the next year, and then we could be done with the funding, and then we could get to what Councillor Walker was talking about as to distribution labor, later, but, but be done with the funding portion, but that doesn't seem to be on people's minds. So I guess I'm still floating in the dark a little bit. Councilor Walker. Mm. Um, yeah, I understand uh, Mandy's Joe's concerns in, term, uh, in terms of determining um, funding and needing to know the distribution schedule but i think you can also look at on the flip side look at it on the flip side like in order to determine what kind of distributions you'll be making you might want to know how much money you'll be getting how often and from where and i think that that's the way that at least the ahra has brought this to us and so i'm trying to look at it through that lens because i think that's the lens they were looking at it in when they brought to us their recommendations um, and so I think those spending recommendations can come later on, but if we as a committee can say that we are willing to commit to however much money annually coming from, just for an example, free cash, that that will give the successor committee a better idea to determine like, okay, so do we think we can start spending on certain initiatives in year four? Do we think we need to wait? Do we want to spend ever spend the account down to zero. And I think those are the kinds of recommendations that I think we would get from the successor committee. So I think that again today, like we should just be looking at what our options are and determining what makes the most sense in terms of our contribution to the fund. Um, and so just bringing it back again to some of Mandy Joe's comments, I'm wondering if it's possible because I haven't looked at that KP law opinion. And so I like in a little bit now and I can't quite remember what all of the options are. I don't have it in front of me. And I don't know if the one that you just referenced you're interesting interested in discussing, but I would suggest that if there are any specific options from the KP Law opinion, um, Mandy Joe or any other member of the finance committee is interested in that they put it on the table now so that we can sort of discuss it and look at it and not just have these two options in front of us. Unless nobody wants to consider those, then I think we should just look at these. Um, but I think I would like to get into more of a discussion about just the funding as opposed to the spending. Bernie? Yeah, what I'm going to say sounds familiar to some other folks who said, I don't have a copy of the KP Law uh, memo. And I spent a few minutes here rummaging through all of my saved documents looking for it. I simply don't have it. I'm, just a reminder that I'm not part of the SharePoint because it doesn't like me. So stuff shared that way doesn't get to me. Um, 
But the point is, is that the 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 commitment was made to come up with two million dollars. Uh, the other commitment that I supported and advocated for was to use the cannabis money. Uh, my interest there was to have a peg that you know we have a funding source that recurs every year um, that people could count on to some degree. We know it's going to appear. We don't know how much money, but we know it's going to be there. So there wouldn't be debate, any debate or discussion about where do we take the money to make our current payment. Now, if we look at what the, the cannabis tax is doing and using Bob's table, and I agree with Council Walker, that we, right at this point, the goal is to get the $2 million. And how do we do it? over what period of time and what are the mechanisms for it. So if there's other mechanisms that were outlined in the KP law memo, then we should really be talking about that. But we have Bob's projection that if we just rely on the cannabis tax, which is one option that's perfectly okay, it may not be satisfying in terms of the speed, but it's perfectly okay, um, we get to $2 million in 2036. Now what happens to that money in between because the successor commission committee decides it's going to spend some of it. We don't know. And in some ways we don't care what our concern is, is how do we accumulate $2 million that can then be used for purposes of reparations. That's the goal. So uh, I'm interested in hearing what other options there are. I will continue to advocate for use of the, the cannabis tax and build the fund up. It's not going to be, it doesn't have to be a perpetual fund. It has to be built up to $2 million. And then um, at that point, it's capped. Uh, Kathy? Uh, yeah, Bernie, I just want to say one thing about um, the contribution was capped at 2 million. So if the fund is growing, we're not capped you know, so in other words, we said we we will contribute until we've contributed two million. So that, I just that, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. So I just, it's, we, it's just, we have to come up with a, two million dollars. It's a new it's a nuance, but I just forwarded to everyone the KP law one. I mean, people aren't going to have time to read it, but the kinds of options that Mandy was referencing is they were saying with you have said it's cannabis tax, it could come out of free cash. You know, it there you you could make another source. This is what you've decided so far. Then they did uh, make a strong statement: is that unless we get legislation, we can't distribute it to individuals. Um, so it's you know, so the the purpose of it. Then they, they went through because the the original report had suggested uh, community preservation act funds or CDBG funds, and they didn't actually draw a conclusion, but they gave a list of what Community Preservation Act funds could be used for that basically said this wouldn't, this isn't, right now it isn't a use that could be allocated. They didn't, Mandy, I'm looking for, they mentioned CDBG, but they don't say, oh, CDBG maybe. So they didn't say, refer to that. So they were talking about what else could we do. Um, so the, the, the decisions to date were cannabis fund until we hit a contribution of two million. Um, and that's where we were last year. And my understanding, just Elisha, is all of this, the council is going to be have to be the one that actually votes appropriations and votes expenditures. So we can't just dealt just like CP, the Community Preservation Act process doesn't allow that committee to distribute. They have to have some guidelines and then come with recommendations. So I've been assuming that the process would be something like that because to pull money back out of these, it has to be um, appropriated with votes. So at some point down the line, whatever, whether it's annual, biannual, um, so that's another, it's a process of spending rather than what options we might come up with um, that we could starting, is it an endowment or not? And then Mandy, as you said, the, do we just fund it all at once and not, and forget cannabis tax? And that was, um, and, and how one, we might do that given the straits the town is 
on in right now, um, your suggestion if we go out with an override to rise it, we don't have that kind of bucket of money to just pull it out um, and fund it all at once. So I don't think that's a good idea. But so th it's just it's a the nuances here are finance was supposed to come up with start with the concepts AHRA had suggested and say, here are multiple ways of looking at it. And at some point, therefore, we recommend and the recommendation would be based on some pro and con of different approaches. That is that is what I understood we were supposed to do. And then we send it back up to the council. So we are supposed to be decision makers here on the range of options and then come up with a, a preferred one based on some reasoning. Not today. I'm not saying we come up with it today, but we at least get on the table thoughts about what that might look like. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Hamicky? Yeah, so Bernie and Matt, you'll get it twice from Kathy and I. Um, it was sent in an email to us. It was not in a packet today for some reason. Um, but some of the options that were discussed there, using MGL Chapter 40, Section 5B, that allows a town council, I'm quoting from page three, maybe page three of the KP law opinion, allows the town council by a two thirds vote to dedicate without further appropriation all or a percentage not less than 25% of a particular fee charge or other receipt to any stabilization fund established pursuant to this section. So one option KP law identified and then later on the next page indicated that um, cannabis taxes are considered a, a cannabis receipts are considered a, a a particular fee charge or receipt that would be allowed this section 5b use so one option that kp law identified was taking a vote by two-thirds to dedicate the cannabis tax either 25 percent or up to 100 percent any percentage in the middle that to go to the reparations fund that would be a vote that would be taken once and then it would not, it would automatically fund according to this, it would automatically, the fees would automatically be credited to the stabilization fund. So unlike how we're operating now with cannabis and letting it fall to free cash and then making an appropriation every year from free cash to the fund at, at each council's desire each year, a vote to under this local option would do it automatically and I believe indefinitely, although I have questions about whether a future council could unoption that tax essentially, <laughs> unoption that option. And so, you know, we're not going to automatically do this now. Um, that was one option KP law identified. Um, another one um, was under that section 5B, MGL chapter 40, section 5B, creating is the, they said it was the creation of a special purpose stabilization fund pursuant to an override. If approved by the voters at a poll, each year the town council would have the option by a two thirds vote to appropriate to the override stabilization fund up to two and a half percent of what it had last appropriated the year before. And so as KP Law's opinion on the top of page four said, this option would allow the council to immediately fund the stabilization account in the amount desired as long as it passes at the polls with the ability but not the obligation to raise equal amounts of funds for such purposes in the future. So that's another option, although as Councillor Shane said, there are cons to that option being that it is it requires a vote at the polls and raises taxes just like a debt exclusion override does, but potentially only raises those taxes for one year. Or if you wanted to not do a full two million or one and a half million in one year, you might be able to do a half million every year and do it for three years. And then the council in three years from now could potentially say no, but maybe when we figured out what might be going on, it could be done again. There's a lot of options that go along with that option that could be discussed. Um, those were some of the two bigger things that became sort of automatic funding. Well, not 
for the for the one it's not quite automatic um but for the other one you know different ways that we hadn't been thinking back in October, I believe, that weren't on our radar that haven't been discussed, that I think merit at least a discussion, given the AHRA's desire to fund this quickly, um, because, you know, at least the override stabilization fund, I don't think I can, I, I'd like to hear other supports for using more than just cannabis taxes out of other revenues for this, because I'm looking at our needs on capital, our needs for operating revenues and operating expenses. And so I have a very big hesitation of doing anything other than cannabis on a year in year out basis um, to fund this because of those other needs. Uh, Councilor Walker. Um, yes, I have a couple of questions. Uh, this may be a question for Holly or whoever else might know the answer, but right now, what happens to uh, the monies generated by the cannabis tax funds as they come in? Would you like me? Holly? Yeah. So the Massachusetts law says that the cannabis tax is a general fund revenue. So it goes into a a revenue line in the general fund. Um, it cannot go anywhere else except to the general fund at this point in time. And then basically what we do is we let it fall to free cash and we transfer it in the subsequent fiscal year after free cash has been certified. Um, okay. And I have another question for Bob. And sorry, Bob, I didn't just have uh, enough time before the meeting to fully review this chart that you put together. Um, and so I'm just wondering if you can explain why the contribution numbers are as is. Well, the, like, sorry. Okay. So if you look at uh, row, these, these three rows, these are the ones that we've had in the past. So those are exact amounts that we contributed. Um, and as Holly mentioned, the, the revenues from cat from cannabis through the third quarter were only about sixty thousand dollars. So we're we're not going to hit over a hundred thousand dollars this year unless something you know miraculous happens. So I just made the assumption that we would get roughly seventy five thousand going forward, and that would be the amount that was available from the cannabis tax. Okay. Um, and so in this scenario, the first one, I just took all of it and put it into the fund. And then when the fund reached 2 million, um, we started pulling money out of it, okay? That's just one scenario. The second scenario was, again, starting with what we already have contributed, um, instead of putting 75,000 into the fund, I put 25,000 into the fund and 50,000 assumed it was a distribution somehow. It's just, it's just a scenario. Um, it's just to, to kind of get an idea of what kind of spending money down fast or faster would, would do in, in, in overall, you know, overall for the, the fund itself and for looking at it. Now I have the fund accruing more than 2 million, maybe you know, we, we could spend it all down after 10 years or something like that. The, the, you know, this is just, this is just, you know, a quick and dirty scenario uh, to just give people a sense of what it might look like on the one hand to kind of accumulate a certain amount, you know, for, in this case, it's for, you know, uh, it's over uh, 13, 15 years. That's probably too long. Uh, we could accumulate it faster, but the point is that, you know, when, once we've accumulated it, you know, then if the, the question becomes how quickly do you want to spend it? Um, and in this one, it, it, you spend it sooner um, over a, a longer period of time, but it's less money each year. So it's, it's you know, really, th those are, that's, that's what I was trying to get at for this. 
Uh, and again, this, these are just scenarios. There, there, there's no, it doesn't, as Kathy mentioned, you could do a either all, every other year, you could do every two years, uh, you know, it, 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 there's all sorts of ways to structure this. Um, this was just to try to get some feel for what it would look like if we funded it only using cannabis and then we did something where we first funded it and then started spending it versus we spent as we, as we were funding along, okay? Set, clarified? I, I think, Bob, in, as I understand your option too, initially you're spending part of the cannabis tax every year until you hit, we've hit our 2 million, then you're starting right. to spend the earnings on the reserve at a, right. a draw. Right. So that's why it starts to be 57, 58, 59. So that's the, you've assumed a 4% draw on the base or whatever you assumed in that, correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look at the formula, it's well up, up here. It's four percent. Yep. Look at the formula. <coughs> okay. okay, and so, then so so the numbers are just sort of assumptions, placeholders that would be generally around that amount we assume to get an idea of what the projections might be, but those numbers could be higher or lower and get any given year. Absolutely. I mean, okay. you know, the, the first the first three years we know. So we know that amount uh, was uh, generated. Um, and then we know the, the current amount right now. Those are the those are the things we know. The rest is just speculation. OK, sorry, I just have two more comments at the end, but those questions were helpful for me into just understanding what exactly it is that we're looking at considering here. Um, so again, part of my concern with using or relying just on the cannabis tax is that we don't know what the numbers be. And so like any year we've seen, we've seen continuous decreases and that could continue. It could not continue, but I think it's, it's hard to get a good idea and project into the future, um, which is my concern with that. And so Considering that, and again, correct me if I'm wrong with my understanding here, that when the cannabis tax eventually, if it's not used in the general fund, falls to free cash anyhow. So I would prefer looking at free cash as an option since the money is going to fall there eventually anyways. And I would like to, as a committee, come up with a number that we would like to consistently fund because I think that that would provide some kind of stability um, and assurance to the successor committee, which would allow them to make a very concrete plan to move forward. Um, and so the way that I would like to address this is to pick a number that we're okay with contributing. Again, personally, I would like to do annually. I know that that's up for discussion here, but a number that we would like to contribute an annually and that that money could come from free cash um, and it could essentially be the cannabis tax that fell into free cash plus whatever the deficit is to get us to the number that we had agreed to, um, if there is even one. Um, and I, I just think I would be not willing to ask for a tax override in this specific position. I think it's sort of counterintuitive considering the purpose of reparations and the pursuit of equity to then ask people to raise their taxes more than we absolutely need to. Okay, so Alicia or Councilor Walker, I just I just said let's let's assume that we we put a we we contribute a hundred thousand dollars annually. Okay, on on just on the first scenario, so we hit the two million mark about three years quicker. Okay, so. Just that that's just one again, one one scenario. Um, we, if we wanted to go say 200,000, we could get to to two million by 2030. okay So th that's why I, that's one of the reasons I, I did this spreadsheet so people could you know get some some feel for the numbers and what it what the impacts of 
changing these numbers are um, in terms of how quickly we can accumulate uh, money and how quickly we can, you know, what, what's available for distribution if you want to distribute it quickly or more, more uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, Andy? Yeah, um, I'm having a trouble maybe, in, maybe it's uh, having a lapse on what to do with Excel, but when I go down to um, cell C19, which is uh, the, the bottom one, one below, and then I do auto sum um, and so that I'm getting the sum total of C4 through C18. Right. What are you getting? Uh, one point three about one one point three five million. Now, I mean that if you're arguing that we we should contribute more, we can do that. That's that I just got to the point where the I just again I just I just put it in. So I just stopped when when I when we had two million in the fund. I didn't look at what we you know. Should we contribute two million and not worry what's what's in the fund? Um, you know that that's something we can we can talk about. What is what was the intent originally? I think I thought, I, I thought it was to contribute two million. I thought it was to contribute two million. Correct. Uh, I just to be you know to be honest with you, I didn't. I focused on the, this two million and not the sum of that two million. Um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out because we have to decide what it may what we're recommending the endpoint be based upon consistency with the original um, agreement that the council had made and if it was to get to two million dollars and you then you're not there unless you continue to make contributions for enough additional years to get there and it does then change what we're doing so it, it, it's a uh, it's just something I th an additional piece that we need to come to grips with is what was meant by the two million dollars was it until we got to a balance based upon um, the the amount of interest accrued and part of the reason that I come to that is that if our one of our goals is to start spending money earlier, then we are then uh, there is an argument to be made that that's not inconsistent with uh, still trying to get to the point where we have contributed over the period of years that it takes to get to a $2 million transfer mm -hmm. into the fund. And I, I can, you know, I can argue it both ways because for, for the obvious reasons, but I think that they've already been argued because we know that the town has multiple demands upon extremely limited resources and we're suffering through that on a continuous basis. And uh, we know that our we're going to be talking about schools a little bit later in the agenda. And uh, we know that the schools have been struggling with this question. So it's a uh, it's just something that I think that we we ought to, to make to recognize as part of the mix of issues that we've got to cope with. I, I agree. Uh, just to, to point out, the, the total that we've actually contributed is about 400, and you look at the sum down here, it's about 450,000, and yet we have 477,000 in the fund. So we've already accrued some interest um, into the fund itself. So, Which then gets to the question of uh, whether the successor committee should be able to spend some of the interest that accrues at an earlier date or spend it you know 
spend it, spend more of the, the principal as well. You know, um, it really, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of scenarios. I just, I just put this here so people could sit, sort of play. No, with I, I appreciate it. And the, obviously the spreadsheet was very helpful because it helped me think through that issue too, as to what was our original goal. And I would have to go back and look at the motion that council passed at the time that it created the fund to refresh my recollection to make sure that I have it, I have the recollection, recollection correct that whether the goal was to, to get to two million dollars or was it to get to to the continue annual transfers equivalent to the um cannabis tax until we got to the point where we have contributed $2 million to the fund. I don't, I think that the gap is that we didn't think about this issue at the time. Right. <laughs> I don't remember precisely. I mean, I have the sense that you have that we agreed to, to fund 2 million, but I don't know that we worded it in such a way that that's correct. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. So we'll have to check that out. Anything else, Andy? Okay. Uh, no, I'll come back if I have more. All right. Council Haneke. So a couple of questions on Andy's line of thinking, which is on, on your spreadsheet, just, just to get an idea on the spreadsheet, you didn't actually take the distribution out of the fund total in your calculations. I don't believe you never subtracted the distribution from one of the fund totals. Um, um, and it would need to be subtracted. I did, from the but total. not until after we finished contributing. So if you look at here. No, it still goes up though. Um, and it's going up, I think, but, but no, the, the formula doesn't ever subtract the distribution. It doesn't have a J in it anywhere. Um, and on either side, but um, my you know, so I I think these are showing numbers that 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 are slightly misleading. But but that that's I appreciate the 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 spreadsheets. But but my question is on this option too. When we talk about how much the prior vote was to contribute to the fund. And how, I guess, you know, what Councillor Walker and all have said is we should be figuring out how to get to that 2 million and by what day we want to get to the 2 million. If we start distributions early that exceed the income on the fund total, doesn't, don't we still have to put money into it? And so the, the difference between when you if if you're contributing, say, cannabis, to, if there's cannabis tax of 75000 a year and you want to put that in and there's multiple ways we can do it, which we still haven't talked about, um, although Councillor Walker and I have, have talked about sort of the two options, um, you get to a $2 million contribution sometime around 2045, no matter how you choose to distribute it. Because you still have to get, you still count that twenty, that seventy five thousand every year, even if in option two you're choosing to distribute fifty thousand of it Correct. in any given year, you've still contributed seventy five thousand, right? right? Correct. Yes. Um. So, so in your spreadsheet, H should actually be seventy five thousand, while J column J still reads fifty thousand because you're still contributing it. And that's where you have to remove the distribution from the fund total at the end of the year to, to get a, a truer sense. Um, well, it's the same math. The math was, is exactly the same. It, it, you, you want it to, to just, you want it, you want it to the columns to be different, but the math is the same. I'm not sure it is because your yes. fund total is taking 5%, but your distribution is then taking 4% out but you're never so so your fund total once you start doing the income should only be increasing by one percent not four five percent according to your sheet but we can argue that from all it's worth but if we're trying to figure out when and how we get the contributions to two million if we stick with can cannabis revenues only and assume that they will 
will steady out at about this year's rate. And that's a big assumption, as Councillor Walker has said. We, we've we just been seeing decreases. We don't know where it's going to sort of flatten out. Um, 2045. That's correct. 2045 yeah. is when we get to 2 million in contributions. That's correct. I believe the initial vote was 2032 was the goal. And so Councillor Walker says, that her preference would be to add money every year above the cannabis tax, presumably so that you can get to contributions of 2 million by 2032, but we haven't talked about the AHRA's request to actually accelerate those contributions even earlier. Um, that's where the special, the st special stabilization override fund comes in as a possibility. I will say I am concerned about using free cash to fund free cash beyond any cannabis, which is why I actually think adopting chapter 40, section 5B might that that automatically transfers the cannabis revenue to the stabilization fund might might be an option I favor because using we cannot count on free cash as being available in any one year. And we have been using that free cash to build up our capital stabilization funds in order to build a fire station and a DPW building. And frankly, I believe the fire station and DPW building are more important to the residents in this town than the reparations fund. Well, if you wanted to get it to be a million, a $2 million contribution um, we would by 2032, we would have to come in at around 195,000 going forward. That's total. Sum is, oh, no, there we go. Okay, the sum is 2.2. It's just over two million, so that that's kind of what you'd have to do. Which is, I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's a that's that's another scenario. Uh, but that that again, that that I, I wanted to put this together so we we have this information, if that's what we want to do. Bernie, yeah. Um, to go back to a point that. Uh, Councillor uh, Haneke raised. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm not a constitutional lawyer. I'm not a lawyer of any kind. I'm just a policy wonk. Um, but a legislative body can't bind the actions, permanently bind the actions of a future legislative body. So if this council voted to uh, adopt Chapter 40, uh, Section 5B and say 100% of the cannabis funds would go to the reparation fund, then that stands so long as a, that this council or another council doesn't vote to rescind it. Okay, so that's none of this stuff is carved in stone. Uh, it's all on word processor. Uh, and again, the goal is to get to $2 million. If we get to $2 million because we put money uh, from the cannabis uh, tax, into the stabilization fund and the stabilization fund is earned interest, then the interest earned goes towards that 2 million. That's the goal. And again, the reason why I favored and continue to favor pegging this to the cannabis money is it relieves us of the debate as to where the funds come from. Now, I understand perfectly well, um, and I, I've been there, believe me, uh, that people would like to know exactly what they're getting every year, but municipal funding doesn't always work that way. Um, but you know that there is a steady stream of, of of revenue. You know what you have in the bank, so to speak, you know what the, the fund total is, and you can begin to work on it. So uh, it, it all um, depends on a future committee, how willing they are, that committee is to... Uh, defer spending the funding and how willing the council is to approve the actual expenditure. But my, I'll, I'll just continue to say, I, I, I want to hold us to using the cannabis money 
to fund it. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I I agree with what Bernie just said. I think cannabis was a good choice. Um, I, it is yes, it's not as stable. Um, it's like uh, cigarette tax money. Those who depended on it, and when we stopped smoking, turned out not to yield as much. Um, but I I think we have to be really careful about any higher obligation. If we think of what we just went through for the regional school system you to obligate ourselves in the future to taking a bigger share of, think of free cash as could be operating money at some point. I mean, we just really have to be careful. And cannabis jumped off the page originally to us because we were kind of accumulating it rather than spending it, even though it was technically going into the general fund, it hadn't been allocated to particular pieces. So, um, you know, as Mandy pointed out, if to get, if we're talking, whatever how we're saying, is it is it a two million total contribution or to build it up to two million? It will take longer to get to a contribution of two million if the yield is only seventy five a year, as Bob is showing. But I think we need to stick with something like that. If it's um, that, I would be incredibly uncomfortable. I'm looking at FY. Next year's fiscal year looks like a huge stretch um, for regional schools, for the elementary schools, um, and we were already hearing about staffing issues and other operating budgets. So if we're discovering that we're uh, being too conservative and getting a higher free cash every year, uh, a better use of it might be to put it into operating budgets, but I, I'm on, I'm even cringing on that. Um, you know, when I, and, and we, we're just so short of the revenue flows that are coming into the town right now, unless something wonderful happens at the state where suddenly the state actually starts paying for some of the items. So cannabis is not yielding what it was, but it is yielding. It's a substantial amount of money that would accumulate so just the one other point, Mandy, when um, I don't know, I didn't go to Bob's out years, but in his option two, he was only distributing a share of the cannabis money. He wasn't distributing anything off the base. So it's not until, as you said, it's not until he gets to that 4% go, going out. Um, so the base just keeps going up by whatever the interest earnings. And um, right now, 5% is probably not a bad assumption, but we've, we've been higher and we've certainly been lower for yields. So I think we have to take, we as the finance committee have to be thinking about this in terms of the larger budget. We can't just be focusing on this set of issues. Thanks. Uh, Councilor Walker. Um, thank you. Uh, so I am not opposed to using the cannabis fund. I would be concerned about relying on it to be the only source funding this fund, considering its fluctuation and considering our goals of uh, meeting the 2 million and by a certain deadline. And I know we're not, you know, we can be off, but I think 2045 is significantly off and we've received a request to expedite. And so I think that I would like to see maybe uh, us consider a combination of things. Um, and so again, I would like to pick a number that we're looking to contribute on an annual basis. And so if we're going with the 100, um, 195K that Bernie put in, that gets us to what our original goal was, um, that maybe we can say something like we are going to contribute a minimum of 195K annually until 2032. 100% of the cannabis fund will be moved to the reparations fund with the recommendation that was given to us by KP law. And then we can debate where the additional or remaining funds can come from, but that would also have to happen knowing what percentage of that is going to be contributed from the cannabis fund. So um, it does make it a bit more complicated, but I think that this is a critically important decision and discussion because we are setting a precedent for moving forward 
And like Bernie said, our decision does not bind other councils, um, but we can send a strong message of our values and to show our firm commitment to this issue. Um, and so should our town be in a position where it's not possible or it's detrimental to our budget or to something else, then I think that still leaves it open to be addressed at that time. Um, but again, I do think that it would be extremely important for us to set a precedent of our values and our commitments and to, to at least make an honest, you know, to really try to meet those original commitments that we we made to make an honest effort and that, you know, in the end, if it turns out that we have a really tight fiscal budget and we need money for other things, that's a decision that the council can make at that time. Michelle. Thank you. This has been a really excellent discussion and really just appreciate everyone's input. Um, I, I, yeah, I want to just support what Alicia was saying and sort of shifting away from it, you know, it almost feels, and I think somebody said this in municipal government, like, you know, everything feels like a burden in a way. Um, but if we think about this more of like an opportunity and go back to the original spirit of the commitment that the council made, um, I think that what Alicia said is really on point, you know, is like, if we have to, I, I really hear what I think Bernie and Mandy are saying about, you know, we've uh, decided on cannabis. There were good reasons for that. We decided on a timeline. Um, unfortunately, cannabis has declined and it could continue to decline almost to nothing. We don't know, you know. Um, so I think that it's about like the spirit of the commitment that we made. And so we want to do this. We made a commitment to do this. We want to bring more people on board to support this commitment that the town made. And so if it's that we're staying, you know, like with the cannabis, but that we say in some kind of policy that the council will look at this on an annual basis. And, you know, I hope that over time as, um, benefits are distributed and uh, folks can see how that is positively impacting members of our community and the community at large, that each year there will be a little more motivation from the council to say, you know, like, wow, this is really look at the way that that went and this went and and, and wanting to find the money um, to get to that commitment more quickly. So. I feel like it's instead of kind of getting into a bind around, you know, figuring out an exact amount, my suggestion would be that we stick with the cannabis um, as it was originally designed in the spirit that it was originally intended. And then each year that the council has a discussion about how we might be able to grab from other places, you know, depending on what the year looks like. So that's that. Those are my thoughts right now. And also, I just want to say that this is like a lot to process. And, you know, so from from my perspective, this has been a really good first discussion. Um, and I just want to appreciate uh, all of you for for um, having this great discussion. Thank you, Bernie. Yeah, minor point. I just wanted to note that the $195,000 number was uh, Bob's, uh, uh, not mine. I, I haven't thrown a number out there other than to say to stick with the <clears throat> cannabis money because it's safe. It's there. We know it's going to be there. We don't know exactly how much, but we know it's going to be there. And we won't have these discussions about how do we fund this. We have a source. And people want to do add-ons. Uh, on an ad hoc basis or later on, that's fine. The council has that, uh, the manager has that ability, the council has that ability, that could happen. Um, the other piece I'd like to throw out there is the data shows that younger people uh, are drinking less, but using cannabis more. So um, 
it's likely here's here's hoping that the uh, uh, that that the cannabis revenue stays steady at least. Thank you. Irv? I really like the uh, option of what I would prefer from my point of view is that 100% of cannabis goes into the fund and that every year 10% uh, of free cash goes into uh, that uh, the reparations fund. And then out of that, every other year, uh, we, uh, the AHRA or its successor group, uh, picks a percentage or it can be a set percentage is then spent. Uh, and the reason for that is that, you know, trying to wait until that the, we all have all that money there, uh, there is no uh, uh, immediate impact uh, that this, uh, that the AHRA reparation fund is having. And I think one of the goals and objectives is to have some immediate impact, even if that impact uh, takes place every other year. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, the fund gets built up over time, I think in a speedier way by doing this, but you're also uh, obviously subtracting from the amount of money that's available at the end, but it doesn't uh, mean that the contribution that the uh, town is making is any less. It's still going to be $2 million. So I, I, I prefer the every other year approach. I, I prefer 100% uh, of cannabis and then 10% of whatever free cash is. Thank you. Andy? Um, following up immediately on what Irv said, 10% of free cash Wait too much. Is, a, is a really significant policy decision because that, and not only is it a lot of money, but it is money that was intended in the round in the last round of discussions is to going into the capital stabilization fund so that we can finally get to the point where we're addressing the capital projects um, and the huge backlog in capital because we haven't even touched on numbers of things that um, are there uh, so I guess that you know it, it it's a it's a big number, and as much as I've supported reparations, I have real trouble with that. Um, I think that our original commitment uh, was that we would take cannabis tax until we totaled a million, and then uh, Michelle urged the uh, committee and the council to change the million to a two million so that we would... Uh, take to keep contributing the amount equal to the cannabis tax until we reach 2 million. Um, I think it might make sense with the falling revenue that is coming in for cannabis tax and the unknown to set a floor, but um, to 10% of uh, something, because we've had years where we've had unexpected uh, amounts coming into free cash. I think the most recent example was uh, the year that we uh, um, did, did, had the, well, the Health came, Claims Trust Fund was in one example when the Health Claims Trust Fund was dissolved and there was uh, money left over and that fell to free cash. Uh, I think that the uh, intent of getting it into capital stabilization fund seemed appropriate. I'm not sure that the council or the community would um, support what you're suggesting. Um, so I think that we need to be very careful on thinking this through as to both what is right and we, what we think the community would support. Councilor Haneke. Yeah, I want to mention again this chapter 40, section 5B. It's the last paragraph. Um, 
that reads a city that accepts this paragraph may dedicate without further appropriation all or a percentage not less than 25% of a particular fee to any stabilization fund established pursuant to this section. Provided, however, and then its receipt is not for reserved for a specific purpose. And then it goes on to say, a dedication shall be approved by a two thirds vote of the legislative body of the city subject to charter and may be terminated in the same manner. A vote to dedicate or terminate a dedication shall be made before the fiscal year in which the dedication or termination is to commence and shall be effective for at least three fiscal years. And so I think what KP Law was saying and bringing this one up, bringing this back to the discussion we've had about cannabis and saying that cannabis tax could be dedicated pursuant to this section is if the council wants to automatically move, essentially move cannabis revenue into the reparation stabilization fund, they can adopt that paragraph, that particular paragraph. And at least for three years, it happens without any further vote. And given what this says, when the money hits 2 million, the council could then rescind that and use the cannabis tax for something else or it could continue doing that. But until rescinded and not less than three years after the first vote, that money goes in without further vote of this council or the next council. And it seems like that should be a discussion we have. You know, Councillor Walker has said, maybe not make it automatic. I'm confused as to why, if we have an option of making it automatic, we wouldn't be discussing the pros of doing that. Um, and I'm curious as to why um, or reasons why we wouldn't want to make it automatic. And I'm not sure where I stand on it, but I think we should be talking about this section that potentially allows the cannabis revenue to automatically be deposited into the stabilization fund year after year after year without vote of the council. Yeah, you know, I certainly agree uh, with Mandy in terms of making sure that it's automatic. I don't think that this is something that should be coming up for vote every year to make and to make it automatic. Uh, as to uh, Andy's point about ten percent being too much, uh, my 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 thought is that uh, if if you're talking about free cash. That free cash is a discontinuous cash flow that is not unknown, uh, and and so if you if one assumes that it's going to be a large amount, then obviously then one has to assume that there would be a larger amount going to uh, uh, reparations. But my point is that um, it is free cash, uh, and yes, we we have in this town established that there there is a certain percentage of free cash that goes to certain projects, capital stabilization funds, et cetera. And I am saying, and I guess I want to make the point is that if the council and the town's going to uh, stick to its values and also to its commitment uh, to reparation, then I certainly do not consider 10% to be uh, too much. We, and, unless one assumes that, wow, we're going to be having great amounts of free cash every year and therefore that's uh, that 10% is, is is really great. It's too large. And if one assumes that, then one, then we have to go back to the whole thing about how uh, budgets are constructed in the first place and are they being constructed too conservatively. But I don't think that uh, the AHRA should be subject to whether it's conservative or not. Uh, it's, it's subject to that money, which is free cash. Uh, and Additionally, uh, the council could all, always say on any particular year, instead of 10%, we are going to, only going to be giving 5%. But it's there. But at least that commitment is made. Councillor Walker? 
Um, thank you. And sorry, maybe I wasn't very clear in my comments, but just to clarify, I would absolutely support um, an automatic transaction and something that would dedicate the um, cannabis tax fund to going directly towards reparations. I think what I was saying about making the looking at the decision every year was it's still my perspective that we should pick a number that we would like to contribute every year and then figure out how to get that number. And so if the major portion of that number is going to come from the cannabis tax fund, that would be great. Again, let's say, for example, we're going with the 195 number and the cannabis fund comes in again at the 105. And so we're looking at where are we going to get the 90K from? And so that was the decision that I was saying. I would be comfortable saying that that would come from free cash. I know that there are reservations for very good reasons about that. And so saying that that portion of the decision can be looked at in terms of where are we fiscally this year? What other things are happening within our budget? Is this still attainable? But I think we should make a commitment to reaching the $2 million by the date that we had intended um, and with regular contributions. Andy? Well, I think it's worth spending just a minute to remember that uh, what free cash is and uh, free cash is neither cash nor free. And uh, what it is, is it is the essentially it's a, uh, the amount of money that is not uh, specifically allocated and is um, available to the town for additional expenditure. And what our policy is, uh, when you go back to the um, budget, budget and financial policies of the town, that you, um, that our goal is to have total reserves, um, including stabilization and um, free cash between five and 15% of the benchmark number, uh, which is uh, essentially uh, tax revenue. And um, the, the, the recognition that 5% stays in free cash because it is immediately available and it's sort of the buffer that um, you need um, to have in order to just operate under emergency circumstances when emergency circumstances arise, um, much like the, our savings accounts at home. And that um, at the closeout of each year, when the amount of free cash is certified for the year, that if there is an amount above 5%, it gets trans, the original policy is it gets transferred into what was then the stabilization fund. And now um, it's sort of been divided into three stabilization funds, um, but the major stabiliz the original stabilization fund is still for general um, critical purposes, such as uh, what do you do when uh, there's a financial crisis in town, similar to the 2007 crash. Uh, when we really had to dig into free cash just to keep programs and services alive um, as our revenue is just plummeting totally. Um, and the, the and I think where it has been amended under Sean Mangano was that above 10%, it goes into capital stabilization funds so that there be an accumulation of capital stabilization funds. So, what um, it's important to understand what is the financial policy of the town and why it is there. And um, I think that what we have to be careful about is not doing anything uh, which is um, changing the financial policies of the town. And uh, we should also be very careful about how we are arranging it. But transfers from free cash 
are not available in years if the free cash actually falls below 5% of the benchmark number. But it's that that hasn't happened in many, many years because it really would be a, a year of uh, having made some very bad budgeting decisions to get us that, to that point. So I, I, I guess that I'm uncomfortable because arguments are being made that I think are just totally financially irresponsible and contrary to what the charge to this committee is. Okay. Kathy, did you want to talk? I hit the wrong button. Um, <laughs> so Bob, Bob, would you do me a favor and change 195 to 100 or back to 75 just okay. to take it out? You know, so it was, you know, we were speculating. It wasn't a promise that we would hit it by uh, uh, 2032. So I just, um, what Andy was uh, talking about is we, we have some extremely difficult years facing us. I, you know, uh, Irv, we just went through trying to find the extra 2% to put in the regional school budget, which was $355,000. And the forecast over the next several years is we're going to be operating in a deficit. Um, you know, unless revenues come in much higher, then we can forecast them. So what Alicia has suggesting, it might be that in addition to cannabis in a given year, we could get as much as cannabis plus another 25,000, but to commit a specific share of free cash in advance wouldn't make sense. I, I did think that the Alicia idea of, is take a look at it each year and say, is there, is there some leeway? But I think we're on really dangerous grounds if we don't think about um, uh, our, particularly our schools. It, we didn't have to stretch very much on the elementary school herb this year because they still had ESSER. Elementary school does not look good for next year without the S without the ESSER one-time funding. So I think we have to think of there is a larger budget and that right now, as Mandy said, we could we we don't currently have the policy Mandy is suggesting that is in the KP law. We have a, each year we'll take a look at it and maybe we can put the whole cannabis in or not, rather than we take an affirmative vote of a two thirds to say cannabis is going in until we change that. So that would be a change from what we're doing right now. Um, and I would be comfortable at least having that be one of the options we're talking about, but to specify any specific share, um, I, I just don't think makes sense. We could have, as I said, if we did every other year, there would be a very robust amount of money that could be distributed each year. Um, if we were doing what Bob has done, but saying every other year we make the distribution and pull down some of the on some of the earnings. Um, and so we, you know, the first few years could be the first every other year could be quite substantial. Um, he's got just distributing fifty thousand, but we could we we would be able to do more than that if we were also doing the earnings on the, the base. So that's that's a discussion on a, do we want in every other year? If it was every other year, it's, it's $100,000, even in the simple option two that he's talked about. So I think we should stay within what we think isn't running into roads, schools, uh, and, and de other departments who all told us they were short on staff. Um, uh, who are so I think we have to be it, this is clearly a value but it's not the only value that we're trying to stretch our revenues from so the, the last thing I wanted to say is in the in the report we have it it is indeed possible to set up this fund we were told um, by our finance staff that if private donors want to put money to augment this fund they can do that you know, so that can be put in to a pool. The town has a way of doing that, whatever it is. I mean, we talked about it with a percent for art. So there could be um, aug augmented amount of money that goes into this. Um, 
doesn't have to be just from the town revenue sources. So I'll stop talking there, but I think we really need to stay big picture, then go down to this picture. And I, I would be willing to go the route, Mandy has said the KP law memo lays out that to actually make it automatic at least for three years um, where we take an affirmative, a two thirds vote of the council, which would be a bigger stretch than we've stretched so far. We were being very cautious when we were first funding this saying only if free cash came in at a certain level, would we take the cannabis money out? So I'll just stop there because I, I'm really concerned about what we do next year with schools. Um, very much concerned about what we do next year with schools. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'll call on everyone who's currently got their hand up, but I do want to wrap this uh, discussion up. We're not going to vote. So um, it's been very good so far, but I do, we do need to move on. So Irv. Uh, I, I guess I, when, when I said what I said, uh, I really want, and I assume that the council would vote uh, especially in terms of Mandy's suggestion, uh, the 100 percent of the cannabis money go in there, and that's on a year-to-year -year basis, and make that vote so that you don't have to do it every year. Secondly, it would is, uh, in, in my estimation, it the, the council has the option every year also to indicate its support of AHRA by uh, appropriating or uh, using money from free cash to augment the um, the money coming from cannabis. Now that that you know, the the part that I see that coming from is free cash, but it doesn't have to be ten percent. It could be five percent or two percent, but something above and beyond uh, the can cannabis money. Uh, I would like to see put in there, and then the spending plan uh, could be every other year. Uh, so that there is a robust amount to be spent uh, uh, by the successor group for AHRA. Uh, and, and, and yes, I do believe, and I know how, uh, how uh, cramped uh, and the budgets are, uh, not only for this year, but next year uh, for the schools. I'm, I'm, re I'm really aware of that. Uh, but I'll, I'll also uh, made it clear that this spending that I'm suggesting uh, for AHRA or successor group is something that uh, outside of the cannabis going 100% to the fund that the town council can on a year to year basis, if it chooses to add to that. Where that comes from, obviously I look at it as from free cash. There might be other ways, other uh, parts of the budget it can come from. But wanting to make sure that that fund is augmented on a year to year basis. Thank you, Irv. Michelle? I do think that the move to formally uh, dedicate the cannabis tax revenue is a show of commitment, and it is uh, more than what we have now. So I think that would be an excellent step to take. Um, I would caution Kathy about individual private money going into this fund. And the reason I say that is there are so many limitations um, that a municipality faces uh, with respect. And we still have a lot of unanswered questions around that. You know, Mandy talked about the special legislation and, you know, there are questions that we still haven't really answered and actually that will uh, we'll be continuing to assess, but I think personally, I would like to see a private fund get created um, that is managed outside of the town. Um, and I, I, I would hesitate to recommend that anyone uh, take their money and put it into the municipal fund only for the reason that it's limited and uh, its uses may be limited. And so there might be a, a, a bigger uh, impact uh, of that private money if it were kept in an account that was outside of the municipality. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, M Michelle and Irv. Um, Matt? Thanks, Bob. 
Um, I'll just weigh in because I, I do feel like this is where we were in many ways last year. I understand that there's a question of making a permanent withdrawal from the or a permanent deposit from the um, cannabis fund. But I also realize that that could be undone on, a, on, a, on any given year's basis. I, I think that there was an underlying, um, you know, the idea of undoing structural racism and using the cannabis fund as a way to do that was something that was really clearly thought out both like both financially and also sort of within the spirit of the action that the council took a couple of years ago. You know, I, I know we we did that last year and I think we anticipate doing that again this year. Um, and I personally, and I, and I don't mean to be uh, passing this buck a little bit, but but I would like to see the successor com successor committee formed. I would like to see a spending plan proposed. And, and I really think that getting, um, as, as Councilor Haneke alluded to, getting taxpayer support for this particular reparation stream of funding is, go is gonna require some spending plans and, and some actual programming to support the reparations because you know we've been talking for a couple of years now about some of the potential fiscal structures for this. I think ultimately, whether it's you know every year or every other year, things like that, those are, those are questions that the successor body um, you know, I, I would like to give them some autonomy around, around some of those spending plans, you know. Um, so I guess I would just say that, you know, I continue to support cannabis as the funding stream for this. And I'm very eager to, to see some uh, movement towards programming to, to, you know, some some expenditure of these funds. And I think that will help, at least for me personally, to have a, a concrete opinion about how to fund it. I'd like to know, you know, what it is we're funding and, and sort of see progress towards that. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm gonna oh, stop sharing. Good, able to do that. Um, okay, we have one more thing on the on the agenda, and that is a letter um, from the Amherst Town Council uh, to the uh, Regional School Committee um, that lays out kind of our um, thoughts on the regional budget uh, for FY26. Um, this was, uh, the letter was drafted by Councilor Haneke and, and Kathy, um, and I put a couple of minor edits into it, but, um, I, I, you know, to, to kind of summarize, I think we, the letter says that we want to, we can't do a more than a 4% a increase uh, even we we may not even be able to get to four percent next year, and we should start with the base assessment, which was the inflation of uh, the FY twenty four budget by four percent, not by six percent. Um, and so, um, I think, uh, Manny Joe, is there something else in here that you want to point out? Um, I want to thank Kathy for her help. I drafted a letter and then I sent it to her because I knew she had um, a lot of thoughts. And so I, I want to thank she was very, very helpful in, in getting this this draft that's presented to you to in, in this form. Um, it, in addition to that FY25 stuff, um, it talks about the need for um, starting the FY26 budget process earlier um, and really being um, intentional and looking at all options, including on the reducing expenses side. Um, and, and then there's a chart in there uh, that's that's obvious that that is built onto a chart that's in the built from a chart in I think our budget report. Um, but it talks about the significant ongoing structural issues and that we need to absolutely deal with that um, in the next year. Um, it is, I guess we would want to CC this to the superintendent, the town manager and the select boards of the other three towns. So they are CC'd. Um, I, we might want to confirm that that's the only or that we do want to include them in the CCs and not just the regional school committee. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of, I think the summary, a brief summary of it, we can talk more about where we got some numbers of people questions. 
or and hopefully I included everything we talked about last last week, I guess it was. That was my goal was everything to include everything somehow in here. Okay, uh, comments, Bernie? Yeah, um, overall, I thought the, the letter is really well done. I would suggest sending it to the finance committees in the other three towns as well, uh, given the remarks that some of them made at the, the, the last meeting we had. The one change I suggested, and again, it's a minor one. If you go to the second paragraph on the second page, the region budget and FY26 has already shown to be a difficult problem. Use ESSER funds to support recurring expenses in FY21, 22, and 24 resulted in a sharp reduction in revenues. My suggestion was to change that to funds or monies. Yeah. Because uh, I, 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 it's too I easy to. Firm. Oh, yeah, well, the copy that's on the, on, oh, on the okay. screen now is still. Doesn't, doesn't have doesn't have that change. Okay, so that's I why I'm, that's why I know you changed it, but that's why I'm mentioning it because okay. it's the copy that we have in front of us doesn't have that change in it. When I see revenues, I think taxes, um, and it's probably uh, better to, um, at least for me, to, to to clarify. Okay, uh, Matt, your your uh, hand is still up. Did you want to comment? No, I think you did a nice job with this, at least laying out our position. I, that's an accident. Sorry. Great. Thanks. Andy? Yeah, I had a couple of thoughts about it. Uh, some of them I uh, wish I had been able to contribute earlier and partly by faults so and shared. But uh, things like when we talk about the 4%, for example, we need to remember that 4% was a stretch to begin with that we only were able to offer because of one time uh, happening that we were uh, uh, not uh, charged with as much from the retirement assessment as we thought we would be because of the date on which retirements fell in relation to when they did the calculation of our liability for contribution to the Hampshire County Fund for the year. And that uh, we started with 3% and then we went to 4% and we were able to go to 4% because of a one-time fluke. So not only do we have uh, our forward year projected deficits, but we have to remember that uh, this year that we thought we were uh, being very fortunate to be able to offer 4% and at that uh, four towns meeting in uh, whenever that was January or February, everybody was ecstatic because we were able to come to 4%. Uh, and so it, to, to not include that recognition, I think we're missing a major point that really is important for um, getting out there. As far as the topic that was just discussed on sending to other finance committees, there's another process that has been under, you know, that we're talking about. We need to make sure that the council is coordinated with whatever the town manager is ultimately going to be doing too, and whether the town manager is going to be um, suggesting that there be a process at some point over the, um, the coming months to talk with the other towns about their projections. Um, and the other towns are not just the finance committees, but also the select boards. And uh, I have been in communication because of my relationships built over years with members of select boards and finance committees in the other three towns. And I think they would be very eager to join in a discussion about the uh, what, what the future funding capacity of all of our communities is. And uh, I'm um, I, th I would uh, take a pause to think about uh, whether that concept of 
um, working with the other towns and trying to um, is something that we want to actually have the council be recommending. And uh, uh, before we go too far with this draft, I think we should we should be checking in with others about about that aspect to it because I know that those discussions have been taking place a little bit. Uh, as I say, I have been testing it with uh, at least one member of finance committee, one member of select board of each of the other towns. So uh, that uh, I think uh, are things that I would think about. Uh, the other thing is, is that we want to make sure that uh, we are very careful in our language that we recognize that this is a challenge and but it's and it's a challenge that belongs to the school committee and we rec we recognize and respect the school committee in having to deal with it and uh, that our goal is to let the school committee know early in the budget process and the new superintendent know early in the process what it is that the funds are that they have to work with but not be in any way saying anything that suggests um, how they go about uh, making decisions that uh, they were elected to make. So I guess um, I can do a little bit of work on the draft uh, to get to the first point, if that would be helpful. And even on the, on, uh, the second point, I, I would be um, willing to do that also. That would be helpful, Andy. Um, Kathy? Uh, yeah, Andy, I was just going to suggest if you look at the structure of it, there's a paragraph uh, second before the close of the first page. It says even 4% is unlike is likely unsustainable going forward. That's a good place to add. Uh, we were only able to go to 4% this year because of a one-time uh, reduction in the payment into the pension fund. We had been at three and a half. So that might be a place to do it. And if you flag, um, there was an effort to do what you just said, that we're we're totally in support and recognizing the challenges that, that they're facing. Um, we're just uh, hoping that uh, they'll have, that there will be, as Mandy said in an earlier piece, so suggestions on where you don't think the wording says that, that would be great. Um, Mandy, so I, you know, I, I was just doing a quick scan on where did we, could it be interpreted in a different way? Because we were definitely just uh, putting this. And I think, you know, the, the, the origin of this was, we say in the finance report that we want to, the counts we're recommending the council send a letter. So I think getting your changes into this would help for when we discuss the whole budget at our next council meeting so that we can get to yes on the letter, um, which is already in the packet. Uh, the only other thing I might say, Mandy, you know, we use DESE data, we, Mandy, I, I did some of the DESE data, then Mandy went and added other columns. I mean, I I actually think this kind of tracking what's going on should be a regular practice within the schools. And, and we sort of say that, and we said that in our finance report, but getting getting a history file, it's it's not easy to put together FTE, who who's working in our school system and how many students we have. You have to go to multiple years of DESE, then you have to go to other pieces. And I know the school our system is actually providing DESE with that information, but just trying to think of a history file. And I went back, I see Irv's hand is up. I went back, uh, you know, five or 10 years ago and the initial reports, particularly the regional report used to have a section that was a longer history file. And I think it's a good practice so that the school committee can be seeing these this kind of um, What's it look like? Now, what you do with that information, I don't know, but it's just a really useful um, 
thing to to be able to pull pull that together. So that was my only other point that this this table had to be created from a combination of mm. school reports, the school system reports on the staff and DESE reports on the student body. Um, before you go on, Bob. Yeah. This is a conversation of, uh, it's a point of order I'm making. Um, I see that a school committee member has raised his hand who was part of this meeting for a different part of this agenda. And I am just concerned um, that this is a conversation about a letter that this council, we would suggest a council send to the body he represents and that it might not be appropriate to engage in conversation with members of the regional school committee about this letter, especially since other members of the regional school committee have not been invited to this meeting. I just wanted to say that I love the letter. It is something that needed to be said. I also want to say, and then I'm, I, I'm late for a phone call now anyway, is that I would really urge the council to get together with the other three towns so that as, as early as possible, so that the four towns are in unison in terms of what they are saying to the school committee, in terms of the financial picture that the towns are going to be putting forward to the school committees and that that be done as early as possible, not in December, but mainly in, De in November, that we have that information as an, uh, so that we know what the financial parameters are and not only that we know what the financial parameters are, but all four towns agree on the financial par parameters. That is really important. And with that said, Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you allowing me to make this comment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilor Haneke, did you have other comments? I did. Um, um, it was my impression we were going to try and vote. You know, we, we voted last week, was it, um, to recommend the council send a letter, but when then they need a letter. And so I'm I'm trying to figure out the process here. If Andy is seeking more changes, are we not going to vote a recommendation that this be the letter? How is this this letter going to get to the council? Because the council, I I thought the intention was for the council to vote the letter on Monday. And so I'm just trying to seek some clarification here. Am, am I taking some of these suggestions and then producing a letter and sending it to Lynn, or is the committee going to try and vote a recommended letter today? I've been trying to make some changes as I've I've heard stuff. I can put it, it on a screen, but I just want to know what, what the intention of the committee is. I would suggest that we uh, take a vote on whether or not to send a letter on and uh, with the understanding that you, uh, Councillor Haneke and Andy and Kathy will make final edits to it. Um, only one person can be charged with final edits. Otherwise, it's a subcommittee and requires an open meeting law, public okay. meeting posting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I think that uh, you should designate one of the... the uh, other two who've been actively working on the letter to take responsibility and that uh, that person receives comments and suggestions from other members of the committee, but it not be discussed and that the authority has to be vested in one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Councilor Haneke, are you willing to take this on? Yes. Okay, then you are so designated. Does everyone ag agree that that with that approach? Uh, yeah, and I'm ready to make a motion um, okay. so that we can vote on it. Um, I I move that we recommend the letter with changes as discussed during uh, today's meeting, and we submit it to the council for their consideration. I'll second, and then I just have a request. Okay. Second. Uh, everyone send it to me to my, by tomorrow so I can get it to Athena. 
on Thursday. <laughs> um, particularly, Andy, the second set, I, I got a lot of what you were trying to do with the 4%, but about the whole working with other towns things, I I kind of got, but not really. And so if you've got concrete suggestions related to that, I would really appreciate that, um, given what we already say in the letter. And so I'm not exactly sure what to do with your suggestions. So concrete suggestions would be appreciated on that issue. And and Mandy, just so you know, I'm not going to send you anything. I think it th these changes, I can imagine where they might go and I trust that they will be worded well. So I think it's it's Andy's responsibility to get you either specific wording. I mean, I, I didn't start to mark it up because I knew you would be starting to mark it up as we were talking. So, um, <laughs> uh, so I think keeping that control, I mean, they, they to me were minor, but, but important pieces to put in. Um, so his one comment on tone, I wasn't sure whether there was a sentence that hit, hit you in the wrong way, Andy. And I just suggest you just do a, you know, track edit, send it to Mandy. I will, and uh, it may be that uh, after reading it one more time through, I'll agree that that third point, which was the one that I was least certain about, I think that the other two, and it sounds like Mandy's actually captured the whole thing about, we were lucky we got to 4% and uh, it was a one-time fluke and why that's important to say that I think that Sounds like Mandy, like you may have actually come up with a way to approach that one. All right, we have a motion and it's been seconded. Uh, so we'll take the vote now. I vote aye. Andy? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Uh, Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Haneke? Aye. Bernie? Support. Matt? Support. Okay, thanks. I think that wraps us up for today. Does anyone have any final remarks? Um, as uh, Go ahead. Oh, I just have a question. Um, do we have a meeting next Tuesday? <laughs> I was just gonna say, uh, <laughs> we have it on the schedule, but I think we could all use a break. <laughs> and I don't know that there's anything that came up I, certainly nothing came up last night, I believe, that we need to re respond to. Um, I mean, we're going to have a, the budget discussion, I guess, next Monday. So I guess so, uh, I should. Go ahead. Go on. Andy? Uh, Bob, you're, you're on the committee, too, but since two of us are on TSO, um, we are, but this is not for next the, um, an immediate action, but something just to make sure that the committee is aware of that we're working on the waste hauler bylaw and the, the process is really similar um, to what CRC was dealing with when, when Mandy was uh, chairing it and was developing the rental registration bylaw that there was a piece about um, how the financial end of it um, was working that ended up having to come back to finance and uh, the referral motion to TSO on the waste hauler actually said that we should be doing this in consultation with the finance committee, we TSO. So um, it is a coming issue for, um, uh, I would guess later in the summer, maybe, or, or fall. I don't think it's going to be sooner, certainly not next week. Okay. So what I was going to ask, that would mean our next meeting is on July 2nd. Is that correct? That's what I have on my calendar. Uh, yes, July 2nd. Is, is that and, worth it, everybody? Is it, yeah, it does. Is it? And, and so one of my questions related to that is we began a discussion today. Are we going to continue that discussion on possible, uh, you know, so just what are we going to do with 
the ideas that we mulled over on possible options on uh, reparations fund funding. I thought and I would try to write up, uh, you know, kind of a summary of our discussion. And maybe we can talk about that on the second again and see if we can, you know, hone hone what we what we put in terms of options. And I, and I would like that and I would like it to hone, you know, down to a minimal, you know, not a gazillion sets and then to start to think of advantages, disadvantages or something about that and uh, think in terms of a deadline for ourselves when we're actually going to do a report with a recommendation. You know, because we could continue to talk about this for a very long time otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I like to have meetings and end at some point, you know, with a like we're trying to get to yes. a recommendation. Um, Bertie? Um, officially, this is my last day of my term. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to everybody. I've really enjoyed the process here and, and the the, mm -hmm. the good working relationship with everybody in the committee and the fact that uh, uh, as I'm fond of saying reasonable people disagree reasonably so it's nice to be among a group of reasonable people and I really very much appreciate it um, if for some strange reason the council deems I should come back for another year I'm not going to be available on July 2nd but we'll cross that bridge whenever the council next votes so thank you, everybody. Okay, thanks, thank Bernie. You. Uh, you've been a great addition to the to the team, uh, Matt. Oh, well, I have to start by echoing that, Bob, um, Bernie. It's really been amazing to serve with you, and I hope you hope to see you again uh, on the finance committee, Bob. Since we since we are going to look at a memo summarizing the reparations discussion, what do you think about asking for a report on the process for forming the successor body to AHRA? Or if not a report, at least you know some brief comments from the town count, uh, town manager in terms of where that's where that's going and when. Um, assigned to a different committee. So that's sitting in GOL yeah. right now, and I'm not yeah. on GOL. But um, GOL also asked for a legal review regarding a lot of questions that surrounded that back yeah. in the last term, and I believe the email that came through with this. KP Law Opinion said it was still working on that one. So I think it's in a holding pattern at GOL right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, we have to coordinate. We, we have to coordinate with GOL on this because they're 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 dealing with the issues, that issue, as well as um, you know, what how we can spend the fund and what process should we use. So um, all right. Anybody else? Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? A so moved. Second. All right. I, uh, I'll vote aye. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Andy? Aye. Alicia? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Bernie? Bye. <laughs> Matt? I support. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you very much. It was a great meeting, and uh, we will uh, see you on the second.